everyone, and welcome to this preview lesson of Fusion Essentials from LowPost.com. In this preview, I'm going to give you a lesson on working in 3D space with 3D elements inside of Fusion, inside of Resolve 15. So let's get started. I'm going to Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to take our title and add it above on video track number two. I'm going to come to the Effects Library. I'm going to add Text Plus, just like such. And there it is, a standard basic title. I'm going to head on into the Fusion module. Now, by default, I'm given a title to work with called, appropriately enough, title. Now, there's a bit of a problem that we're going to run into with this. Now, if you've been going through those Fusion text templates or those Fusion title templates that we talked about in a previous lesson, you may notice that a lot of them look like they're 2D, but they seem to be living inside of 3D space. What's important to keep in mind is that whether you want to work with extruded text, meaning your text actually has depth, or whether you'd like to work with 2D text living in a 3D space, your Fusion composition has to be set up for 3D, no matter which one you want to do. If you want to live in 3D space, it's got to be set up for 3D. You want extruded titles, it's got to be set up for 3D. So obviously right now, we're definitely not set up for 3D. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our template node and we're just going to delete it. I'm just going to move the media out node over to the right. And what we want to focus on primarily in this lesson is these tools or these nodes over here on the right hand side of the node toolbar. You'll notice as we hover over, we'll get the tooltips telling us that's an image plane. These are shapes. This is the important one for us. That's text 3D. We even have a merge 3D, a camera, a spotlight, and a render. Now we're gonna use a lot of these in this lesson, so let's keep rolling here. Now, since we are talking about text, let's drop text in first. I'm just gonna deselect the media out note. And I'm gonna add some text. What I'm also gonna do is I'm going to add an image plane, just like such. Okay, now the image plane is going to represent that background that you saw, that bar. Okay, now you'll remember from our previous lesson, if we want to take these two and we want to merge them together, we can do it one of two ways. Now keep in mind, we're not utilizing the merge tool that we've been accustomed to working with up until this point. If I add that in here and attempt to add one of these elements to it, it just won't go because we need to utilize the merge 3D node, which you can find right here. I'm just going to take it and add it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag both these elements into it. Now what's important to keep in mind, and you'll notice that if I hover over to see what these inputs represent, all this represents is an input to this scene. Okay, this is the second input. This is the first input. So what I'm going to do, once I have my two elements in my Merge 3D node, I'm going to connect that to the Media Out node. Oh, well, that's a little bit weird. It won't actually let me connect. Well, when I work in 2D, it will let me connect. So what exactly am I missing here? Well, there's one step that we have to add between any one of our nodes that we have and the media out node to see work that's being done in 3D. And that's the renderer node, okay? Now we can find that right here. I'm simply going to add it like such. Once I do, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna connect it to media out and you'll see that what I can now see is my merge 3D node with my image plane. Now, why am I not seeing any text? Well, of course I haven't input any text yet. Okay, so let's just work with our image plane for right now. Now, one thing I love about doing this lesson, and I've actually sort of prepped it a couple times, is that every time I do it, it comes pretty darn close to being the same, but always slightly different, which gives each title that I create a little bit of a unique flair to it. Okay, so let's take our image plane, and what we're going to do is we're going to head on into its color first. And I think I'm going to give it, why don't we just sort of go with that blue color. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of a lighter blue color than we had before. What I had also done, is I believe I gave it an opacity of about 0.5. So let's just take opacity. We're just going to drag it down to somewhere around 0.5. And what we're now going to do is we're going to head on into the transform panel. And I'm going to come down to the scale. And we are going to make sure we don't lock the scale. And let's just get something that looks pretty, pretty neat there. Something about there, I think, is pretty good. Now, I think what I'm going to do, just for the sake of doing this, for right now, is I'm just going to adjust the opacity just so I don't see through to the checkerboard background. Okay, perfect. I'm going to come to our text 3D node. Now, let's just enter some text. I'm going to punch in low post, okay? Text is very big. So how do we get in and adjust it? We can do it one of two ways. We can utilize the size parameter inside of the text node, or what we can do is add a transform node. Now, 
I'm going to do it sort of as a two-step process. We're going to adjust the size over here inside of the text 3D node, and then I'm going to position it using a transform node, okay? Now, you'll remember, once you start dragging the size of the text, it's going to be making big jumps. So if you want to get in and make it a lot smoother process, if you hold Command or Control, you can really be precise as to how big you want this title to be. Now, you're probably wondering what exactly is going on here with the text sort of appearing and disappearing behind that uh, image plane. What's actually going on is that if you think about how these items are stacked in 3D space, technically they're both at zero, meaning they're actually sitting exactly on top of each other. So that's why we're getting this weird sort of breakthrough, but don't worry, we're going to take care of that in just a second, okay? Now we're going to add another text node in here in a second, but right now let's just deal with what we have, okay? What I'm going to do with our text 3D node is I'm going to add a transform node. Now remember, we don't want to be going over to the transform node over here. What we want to do, and I'm just going to use shift and spacebar to call it up. There's transform. I'm just going to punch it in again here so I can get it transform. I don't want this one. I want transform 3D. So I'm going to add that. Now you'll remember that shortcut. We're going to hold shift on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows to add this node in between our text and our merge 3D. And let's just take this now. Let's just position it roughly where we're going to want it to be. Okay, I'll just maybe... Maybe we'll just bring it up a little bit, kind of like that. Good. Now, here's where things get really cool, okay? What I'm now going to do is start setting things up in 3D space. So what I want to do is I want to see two different views on two different viewports, okay? What I want to see on one viewport, and we'll use the right viewport for this, is the Merge 3D node. Now, you'll see as soon as I switch over, I'm now looking at our elements in 3D space. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Well, we'd like to position this. So let's take our transform node and I'm going to adjust the Z offset again. I'm going to hold command just to position it roughly a little bit in front of where it was before. Now, this is a great view and everything, but I'd really like to start to rotate around this image so I can see exactly what's going on with it. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold option on the Mac, alt on Windows. I'm going to use the middle mouse button, or in my case, it's the mouse wheel to rotate around this scene. Now you'll see that we actually have these elements sitting truly in 3D space. Okay, Let's now get in and let's extrude this text. Now to do it is actually fairly straightforward. What we're going to do is head back to the text node. I'm simply going to come down to the extrusion parameter and I'm just going to start dragging it out to give it a little bit of depth there. Again holding Option or Alt on the keyboard and there's our low post with some extrusion. Very nice. Okay. Now what I'm going to do on the left hand viewer is I'm actually going to call up the media out node because that's basically going to be our final composite. So we have our 3D view, which is actually our merge 3D node, right viewer. We have our media out node on the left viewer. Now what I'm also going to do here, because you know I'm all about naming and keeping everything named what we want it to be, we're simply going to call this by hitting F2 on the keyboard. We're going to call this low post. Okay, just so we can keep track of things. Perfect. Okay, I'll call this one background bar. All right, let's get in now and let's add our next little bit of text, which is going to be Fusion Essentials. Okay, so again, what we can do is I'm going to take our low post, I'm going to copy it, and I'm just going to paste it down like such. Now, what gets very cool about the Merge 3D node is unlike the standard Merge node, we can actually have more than two inputs. You'll see we actually have this pink input, which represents a third input for this scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect it to our low post here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to retype this as Fusion Essentials. Okay, there's Fusion Essentials. We're going to actually put Fusion Essentials in here. What we want to make sure of with our Fusion Essentials is that they are going to be left justified. And I think they're a little bit big. So let's shrink them down. Let's also adjust our line spacing here. There we go. I think it needs to be a little bit smaller. Kind of about there. Now, again, much like we had done before, we're going to head back to our Select Tool option. I'm going to add the Transform 3D node in there. Let's just add it in there. Very nice. So we can now take this and adjust its position. Kind of like that in 3D space. Okay, now let's just get our Merge 3D node back up on our right viewer here. And again, holding Option, you can now see how everything is placed. Now, you'll also see that Fusion Essentials right now is sitting directly on that 
bar. So let's just bring it out ever so slight. It doesn't need to be at the same place that low post is. So let's just adjust its offset here. Kind of like that. Very, very nice. Okay. Now you're going to notice something, and I think I'm going to give low post just a little bit more of an extrusion here. Okay. Very nice. And let's do the same thing for Fusion Essentials, only because I really want it to stand out. You're going to notice that our element is pretty flat. Okay. Even if I come to the Merge tool and I come in here and I start to rotate it, because remember, these elements are actually all independent of each other. You'll notice that I don't have a lot of detail when it comes to the actual extrusion. I can't see any edges. I can't see the extrusion. So what exactly is going on here? Well, keep in mind, it's right now it's essentially like there's a blanket light just lighting everything completely evenly at 100% in all directions. But when you're going to get in and start making scenes in 3D, lighting is going to be essential. Now, the lighting is going to be attached, in our case right now, to that Merge 3D node. Okay. Now, here's where things get really cool. And by having the Merge 3D node up on the right viewer, it's going to make things very, very apparent very quickly as to exactly what's going on. So with our Merge 3D node selected, I'm going to head on over and I'm going to add a light to our scene. Okay. Now you're going to see where it's placed the light. I'm going to hold Command on the Mac Control and Windows. I'm going to use the middle mouse wheel to zoom in here and I'll use Option to rotate around. You'll see right now the light is sitting directly on our bar right dead in the middle of the composition where everything is being added. You'll notice that right away. Everything is added right at that zero plane right there. Okay. The only problem is that even if a light's been added and it's been added behind our text, we still should see something even if everything is in darkness. So what exactly is going on? Well, if you come to your Renderer 3D, you'll notice right down here at the bottom where the lighting option is, you have the option for lighting as well as shadows. Now you'll notice that this only appears from the Render 3D node. So with the Media Out node selected as being viewed, I can see over here exactly what is going on as part of that Render 3D. But because the Merge 3D node appears before that, we're not going to get any impact of this light in this view. But that's okay. Because what I want to do here is I just want to rotate a bit. And I just want to reposition this light. And you'll notice that as soon as I do, it's a very dynamic change very quickly. Okay. I'm just going to zoom back here just so we can get this light placed where we want. Kind of like that. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it about here. Okay. And with our light selected, let's actually come back here to our spotlight. I'm just going to place it up here just so that it's a little bit out of the way. Okay. What I'm going to do is adjust things like the cone angle. Kind of like that. I'm going to adjust the angle a little bit. And I think that's okay. Now, if the intensity is too much, we can back off on it. But I don't necessarily mind it being kind of like that with a little bit of a hot spot in the middle. Because what's important to keep in mind is that once we reposition this element or start to rotate it, the lighting is going to have a direct impact on that, okay? Now you'll see that I can actually move this as well. So if I was to move this light over like this, we could actually animate it moving across. Now I think I'm just going to back it off even a little bit further here. Let's just back it up and let's just adjust its intensity just down just a little bit. I think that's pretty good just like that. Now, one thing that's also important for you to keep in mind, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab our low post text. It's actually the transform node that I wanted to grab. I'm just going to adjust its offset just a little bit. And that's actually what I wanted to show you right there. Okay. You'll see that where I have it positioned, it's almost sitting directly on top of the bar. So the shadow is not readily apparent. But once you get in and start adjusting that Z offset to bring that text farther away, from that element, you'll now see that that shadow appears basically based on where that light is positioned. I don't want it to be too much, maybe right about there. Maybe we'll just bring Fusion Essentials forward just a little bit so that we can see its drop shadow as well. Let's put it right about there, perfect. Okay. Now what makes this very cool is when we're ready to get in and to animate this lower third, I don't have to worry about anything, any of our background bar, our low post text, Fusion Essentials text, any of these 3D transform nodes. I can now get in and do all of the animation from within the Merge 3D node, which includes the spotlight, but it's going to leave everything relative to where I currently have it existing inside that node. It's kind of like a parental hierarchy. What I'm going to do to the parent node, which in this case is the Merge 3D node, is going to happen to all of the children below it or anything that's connected to it. Okay, let me show you what I mean. First things first, I'm going to need to call up my title saves and I'm going to do that by first turning off the center 
option, and then I'm going to press Command or Control and G on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. There's my title safe. What's important to keep in mind, doesn't matter what's title safe here in our 3D view because we're going to make all the adjustments and see it live as it's happening over here on the left-hand viewer. I'm going to grab this Merge 3D node, and what I'm going to do first of all is just scale this down. Now, we can actually leave that locked. Let's just scale it down like such, and you'll see dynamic update on both fronts. It's doing it on the left viewer and the right viewer at the same time. I'm just viewing one in 3D space, and one is going to be the output that's going to be going back to resolve. Let's put it maybe about there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to adjust its offsets. We're just going to bring it south. And we're going to bring it. Now you'll notice as well that as I did that, I'm just going to undo what I just did. I want you to watch what happens to the shadow. And it's actually the perspective on Fusion and Essentials. As I lower it down, you'll see that I get a better view of that shadow like such. And it will be the same going the other way too. There you go. This is truly a dynamic 3D element living in 3D space. Okay. Now I'm just going to take this element. We're just going to put it over here. And I think I'm just going to adjust the brightness of that light just a little bit. Not too much. I just want it to be a little bit brighter. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our Merge 3D node. And I'm going to adjust its rotation. Again, Command or Control to slow this process down. Maybe we'll put it about there. Okay. And we're going to make sure we're at the beginning. I'm going to add a keyframe for rotation. I'm going to come all the way down to the end. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to go to minus 22 now. Okay. Now, by doing that, you'll notice we get a little bit of an odd, almost seemingly a position change. So what we're going to do at the same time as doing the rotation animation, I'm just going to add an X offset. And at the end, we're going to adjust that so that it seems to stay always at the left-hand side of the screen. And essentially, what we have now created, and I'm just going to reposition this screen here, okay, is a lower third element in real 3D space with real 3D extruded text and drop shadows, lighting, animated, all from within our Fusion timeline. And if we were to simply go back to Resolve, this title would be ready to go at the snap of a finger. Now we've covered a ton in this lesson. And what I want to do in our next lesson is I want to wrap things up by bringing everything together that we've talked about all the way from the beginning of this course all the way up to this point by creating one last final quote unquote master project that we're again going to take everything we've learned and create a very cool look inside of Fusion and then inside of our Resolve timeline. All right, that wraps up this lesson, and I hope you enjoyed this preview of the full Fusion Essential course that we offer at lowpost.com. To check out the full course, you can simply click on the link in the show notes below this lesson. And don't forget that we've got this course plus others and some great articles specifically designed for finishing and visual effects over at lowpost.com. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks for watching.